uh, last uh, lecture we had an introduction to transport layer we saw that there are two protocols in the transport layer udp and tcp today we'll discuss about one of the functions of these two protocols multiplexing and demultiplexing um, before understanding how multiplexing and demultiplexing works let's first try to see what are the major services of tcp and udp uh, both uh, udp and tcp performs a specific set of functions as we discussed in the last lecture udp which is an unreliable and data delivery protocol uh, that means it does not provide any guarantee of delivering data to the other side provides two and only two functions multiplexing demultiplexing and error detection tcp on the other hand which guarantees that data will be delivered performs these two functions multiplexing demultiplexing and error detection as done by udp apart from that it performs two additional functions one is congestion control and the other one is flow control now oh, uh, let's try to understand the flow data arrives from the different applications of the application layer now whether we are using udp or tcp the data is divided into small number of packets or segments if uh, such a division is necessary for example if we uh, have uh, around 100 bytes of data coming from the application layer and say uh, we divide it into 10 small number of packets so each packet will contain 10 bytes of data now each of these packets will contain certain extra information which we call the header information now why do we require this header information we require the header information to achieve these services which services these particular services which we have seen like multiplexing demultiplexing error detection etc so these particular services or functions are achieved by inserting additional information in the data packets and this additional information is known as header information one obvious drawback of uh, this header information is that this header increases the size of the data packets so it's basically an overhead but obviously we require this header information to achieve those specific tasks now because we are uh, starting with multiplexing and demultiplexing let's try to understand what type of header information is used to achieve this particular task to achieve multiplexing and demultiplexing we use something known as port numbers we had discussed about port numbers briefly when we were discussing application layer now these port numbers are actually used to achieve multiplexing and demultiplexing port numbers uh, starts from zero and it can go up to 65535 out of these port numbers 0 to 1023 are reserved port numbers we have seen that uh, certain well-known applications have certain port numbers like http has port number 80 uh, ftp has port number 21 and 20 so these port numbers from 0 to 1023 are specific port numbers which are reserved for well-known application if you are developing a new networking application you will be using a port number beyond this range now these port numbers are indicated by using 16 bits that means the header information that is used to indicate port numbers uses 16 bits of information that means each of these port numbers are represented using 16 bits in the header part now how these port numbers are used to achieve multiplexing and demultiplexing that we will be discussing in detail as of now now to achieve multiplexing and demultiplexing using port numbers we will be using two port numbers instead of one single port number now let's try to understand this uh, technique of uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing using port numbers now let us take this example we have a client machine where two browsers are running and we have a web server because this is a web server we already know from our previous discussions is that web applications are identified by port number 80 now this browser sends 
one request this browser sends a different request the transport layer of this client machine let's indicate this part as the transport layer the transport layer takes the data from this browser it takes the data from this browser then create packets and send over to this web server now taking data from these two different browsers and then creating packets is known as multiplexing now the main issue of the multiplexing is that when response are sent back from the web server how does the transport layer of this client machine know that this particular uh, response is for browser 1 this particular response is for browser 2 that means the transport layer of this client machine should not mix up the responses sent by this web server it should send the appropriate response for browser 1 to browser 1 it should send the appropriate response of browser 2 to browser 2 now how this is achieved this is achieved by using two specific port numbers one port number is known as the source port the other port number is known as the destination port so all the data packets contain two extra information two header information one is source port number one is destination port number now let's try to first understand what happens for the data sent from browser one the request generated for browser one it first goes to its socket and that this is and the spots to the transport layer of this machine now because this browser one is requesting data from this web server and this is a web application and this is the destination machine and because web applications are identified by port number 80 that's why the destination port would be 80 for this particular browser one so let's say that the destination port number of the request generated by browser 1 is 80 now same for browser 2 because browser 2 is also requesting from this web server that's why the destination port number for browser 2 would also be 80 now what about the source port number why do we require the source port number because the transport layer has to understand which request is coming from which browser and when response comes back from the web server which response has to be sent to which browser to indicate that information this source port number is used now what is this source port number source port number is a dynamic number it's a random port number that is generated by the transport layer of the client machine and this is between the range of 1024 to 65535 remember port number 02 1023 are reserved port number so this machine will insert a random source port number in the range 1024 to 65535 any port number that is not being used at the present moment so let's assume that uh, for the browser one it uses port number 5001 so the data packets that are going from browser one would have a source port number of 5001 and a destination port number of 80 the destination port number 80 is because this is a web server and web servers are uh, indicated by port number 80 now the request sent from browser 2 would have the same destination port number but it would have a different source port number let's assume that this is 5020 any port number in that specific range which is not being used at this current moment now when this request goes to this web server the web server receives the request and then generates the appropriate reply now reply comes back to this client machine now when a reply is sent from this web server it also uses uh, this source port number and destination port number this source port and destination port would always be there in all data packets whether it is using tcp or whether it is using udp 
now think of the response going from the web server to the client machine the response because this is going from this web server the source port in this case would now be 80 the source port would be 80 in both these cases for both these browsers why 80 because this request is being the response is being sent from this web server now so this source port now gets uh, reversed the request comes from this source port to this destination port when response goes back the source port is 80 because it's going from this particular source now the destination is this client machine now in the destination port number for browser one the uh, destination port number would be 5001 and for the other browser the destination port number would be 5020 now what happens is when the client machine received this particular packet it understand that this particular packet is for browser one how does it understand it understand that uh, by looking at this destination port number because initially this port number was used by this particular browser and when this particular packet arrives from this web server it understand that this particular packet has to be sent to browser 2 so this is how demultiplexing is achieved by using source port number and destination port number now let's take one more example now we, we have a machine which bought a web server and an email server that means a single machine is running a web server as well as an email server the web application is known by its well-known port number 80 and the email is associated with port number 25 now we have a client machine browser 1 is sending a request to the web server browser 2 is sending a request to the web server as well and we have an another application say an outlook application which is sending a request to uh, the email application on port number 25 now can you give some of uh, the source can you give some source port numbers to the request sent from browser 1 browser 2 and outlook and what would be the destination port number in each of this case uh, so for browser 1 because it is sending a request to the web server the destination port would obviously be 80 and we would have some random port number say 6020 for browser 2 because it's sending a request for the web server as well the destination port number would be again 80 and it would have a different source port number say 7000 the third application is sending a request to the email application so in this case the destination port number would be 25 and we have a different source port number let's assume it to be 8001 now when response comes back from this uh, server which is both a web server and email server the request uh, the response that is sent for browser one would have source port number 80 and the destination port number would be 6020 that means uh, this thing would be reversed for this case for browser 2 the destination port number would be 80 the source port uh, sorry the source port would be 80 and the destination port number would be 7000 and for this outlook application the source port number would be 25 and the destination port number would be 8001 let let's have to final issue now say we have a web server it's running an web application on port number 80 we have two machines one say machine a another machine b in machine one there are two browsers uh, which is requesting for pages from this web server and in machine b there is one single browser process which is requesting certain pages from port from this particular web server for browser one or machine one say the source port is 5000 the destination port is obviously 80 and for browser 2 say the source port is 6000 and the destination port is 80 for machine b say the source port number by chance is same uh, 5000 as of browser 1 of machine a uh, this is possible because it's a different machine it's an entirely different machine and uh, by chance it uses 
the same port number as of the port number used by a process of a different machine and obviously the destination port is 80 for this particular web server now how do you differentiate between this request and this request because both of them have the same source port number 5000 and the destination port number 80 so this would be a confusing issue but this issue is easily solved by noticing the fact that because these are two different machines they would have different ip addresses this machine would have a different ip address this machine would have a different ip address so the source port number the destination port number and finally the ip address this tuple would uniquely identify a particular request that means for browser one of machine a the source port would be 5000 the destination port would be 80 and it would have a particular ip address the ip address of machine a for the browser process of machine b the source port is 5000 destination port is 80 this is same as the source port and destination port of browser one of machine a but because machine b would have a different ip address because we have already discussed that every machine would have a unique ip address so this ip address would be different so this tuple this source port destination port and ip address of this browser process would be entirely different than this particular tuple of browser one of machine a so finally the source port number the destination port number and the ip address of a machine uniquely identifies a uh, particular uh, request from a particular process so today we have seen how uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing is achieved by using source port number and destination port number